Yeah. 
That's it right there. That's his 2000. shouldn't have been here. Uh, I would have rather not been here because it would have been Coach Whiteman was healthy. But, uh, you know, I stepped in. I did my best. Kids really did a great job of rallying around me. They believed in me. I believed in them. It, it just worked out in our favor tonight. Kiwani's a fantastic program. They're well coached. Great player in Donovan Oliver. And, you know, th these are the games we get up for. You know, it's fun to play these. Uh, we've been hearing about each other on each side of the conference, and we we're definitely excited for it. They made a couple runs there, and we just locked down on defense. We did a great job boxing out and getting rebounds, getting stops. That was the big thing. Defense was the thing that won us this game. I did a little bit more yelling tonight than I wanted to do, so I don't know if the kids really, really enjoyed that part of me being back. But uh, it was great for me to be back on the sidelines and, and watching these guys play, and and uh, you know we were able to pull one out tonight. For the kids to come back after last year and to compete the way they have, and for our record this year, I mean that's great. We just got to be ready for that game. I know that Winnipeg is a pretty good team. We have to be ready to play and play hard and play smart. You know, last year. Um, coming in, we, we were expecting a lot of things. We're not expecting anything this year. Nobody's going to give us anything. We got to take it one game at a time, and, and we just came out with a lot of energy and confidence, and you know, it just it just kept going throughout the game. We 
we haven't arrived anywhere. You know, we're, we're right back where we were last year, but you know, we didn't end up where we wanted to be last year. So again, just it's one game at a time mentality, and that's we're just going to focus on Friday now. Last year, that was a dagger, and I think all the kids that came back this year, I mean, they want to win. I mean, they don't want to have another thing that happened last year. So I mean, that's just motivating all of us to keep going. I, I don't have to talk a lot about it, and, and these guys don't have to talk a lot about it. I think it's just kind of ingrained in them from last year. I mean, they just kind of have that that internal quietness that they know what they want and they don't have to talk about it a lot. I don't have to talk about it a lot, but they know uh, they want to take that next step. After trailing at the half 15 to 8, it was a third quarter that Rock Ridge fans will not soon forget. A comeback sparked by a 20 to 8 run in the third quarter. The Rockets go on to beat Winnebago, claiming their first ever sectional championship. Our shots were going to fall. They weren't falling in the first half. We weren't taking bad shots. We were playing great defense, and our, our shots will eventually fall. And I thought they did, and I thought our kids came out with you know, a lot more confidence. And, and uh, you know that, that third quarter is what did it. We're going into the locker room, that's all coach talked about. Our, our shots are going to fall, it's going to be all right. Come out second half, played the same great defense, home to about the same amount of points, and then our shots started falling and we pulled away. I, this is this is the best feeling ever, to be the first ones ever, and then I, I wouldn't want to do it with any other bunch of kids. That's that's pretty pretty cool. I mean, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't really have any words. It's just it's really cool to be a part of it. It's the most incredible feeling I've ever had. You know, we've been here three times in our history. We couldn't get it done last year. We thought we had a heck of a team, and it was just, it's an incredible feeling. I'm speechless. So the Rock Ridge Rockets move to 29-1 and as they head into a super sectional matchup at Northern Illinois. In Farmington, Greg Armstrong, WQAD Sports.
they have a, a very good player in Christian Williams. I know he plays on the AAU team that Brian does. Um, Brian told me a lot about him. Uh, you know, St. Teresa's a great team. You know, you're not going to run into a bad team down here. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to play as hard as we can and hopefully come out on top. No team down here is going to be a one-person te uh, one team. And it Everybody's going to have great defense, and they're going to they're going to have they're going to run their sets to perfection. And you, you really have to play your best basketball when you're down here if you want to make a run at, at winning it. In their first ever trip to the state semifinals, Rockridge started offensively a little bit slow, only hitting four shots in the first half. They got it going in the second half, but 13 turnovers cost them in the end. They ran that tempo press on us, and I don't think we really responded to it well. We had some unforced turnovers against that, and they just they converted on them, and that's, that was the difference. They had that 10-point lead the first half, but we kept it right around 10 the whole second half. If we just played like that the first half, then we'd have been just fine. Shooting and turnovers, because uh, defensively, we know that we knew they were going to be a good offensive team, and our goal usually defensively is to hold uh, teams to 45 points or under. They scored 50. That's that's acceptable because they're uh, phenomenal offensively. They were long and they're athletic, um, a lot more physical than I thought they were going to be actually. Uh, but you know, we gotta we gotta account for that stuff. We got it, like Coach said. You know, if calls aren't going our way, we got to adapt to that. You know, and, and in a Final Four game, we, we struggle with that a little bit. But you know, we came out and lit it up in the in the third quarter. But then, you know, why we're lighting it up? I mean, we're coming back, but on the same hand, we're turning the ball over, and uh, you know that 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 hurt us. So Rockridge will look to bounce back and play for third place tomorrow, and they'll be bringing home their first ever state hardware in school history. In Peoria, Corey Cuffler, WQAD Sports. Good luck, guys. Come on. That was by far my favorite, uh, my favorite point of this uh, this whole journey, this season. I, it's just, it was incredible to see those two, you know, for what they've done for this for this team and for this program. You know, I think the community loved it too, and and seeing those big smiles come out of that starting lineup of those two, it was an incredible sight. And it's something I'll never forget. I'm really happy for them. I mean, it's super exciting. I mean, it's pumped to get out there with Nolan and Luke and Brian, TJ. I mean, super fun. And, couldn't think of any other way to do it in the last game of his career. I, I sat here all day thinking, I'm like, you know, those two have meant so much to this program and, and what Nolan went through by not being able to play in the playoffs in his senior year in football because he had that hamstring injury. And then, you know, he, he rips out his knee in, in every place during uh, Macomb. And I'm like, I mean, I actually, when he, when he called me up and, and told me it happened, I broke down because here's a kid that's, it's worked to have his senior year just taken away from most sports he plays. And, and you know, Jake, 
again, no brainer. I mean, you know, here's a kid who's been driving up to Mayo and then driving back to Super Sectional, driving back to Mayo, driving back to State. I mean, I, I mean, they're family. You know, I, I love these kids like they're they're my own, and and in my mind, they they earned that right to get on that floor and start. It's incredible to see those two, you know, for what they've done for this for this team and for this program. You know, I think the community loved it too, and, and seeing those big smiles come out of that starting lineup of those two, it was an incredible sight, and it's something I'll never forget. I'm really happy for them. I mean, it's super exciting. I mean, I was pumped to get out there with Nolan and Luke and Brian and TJ. I mean, super fun. And couldn't think of any other way to do it in the last game of my career. I, I sat here all day thinking, I'm like, you know, those two have meant so much to this program and, and what Nolan went through by not being able to play in the playoffs in senior year in football because he had that hamstring injury. And then, you know, he, he rips out his knee in, in every place during uh, Macomb. And I'm like, I mean, I actually, when he, when he called me up and, and told me it happened, I broke down because here's a kid that's, that's worked to have his senior year just taken away from both sports he plays. And, and you know, Jake, again, no brainer. I mean, you know, here's a kid who's been driving up to Mayo and then driving back to Super Sectional, driving back to Mayo, driving back to State. I mean, I, I mean, they're family. You know, I, I love these kids like they're, they're my own, and, and in my mind, they, they earned that right to get on that floor and start. Thank you. 